everyone. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today because actually this means that I'm on the other side of my upper bluff procedure. Yes, tomorrow it will be three weeks since I had the upper bluff procedure. I actually flew to Arizona to a man that I think is a fabulous plastic surgeon, Dr. Christopher Maloney. He is Harvard trained and he does almost all of his facial work under a local. So you don't have to go out or anything like that. And I've always been impressed with that. And in this video, I'll be showing you my day by day healing journey for the first two weeks. And believe me, it was ups and downs and all arounds. But before we get into that, I'd like to show you my outfit that I have on today and all of the pieces, the shirt, the jeans, and all of the jewelry are from Amazon, so they're really reasonable. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that little bell, that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. Okay, let's get into this. And I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I am 64 years old, and a lot of you will say, well, Beth looks pretty good, but she's had lots of work. And I have done some tweaks along the way. I did do the bluff eye procedure, which I will tell you about in just a few minutes. And I'll show you a picture that will show you exactly why I did this. But if you're curious about the other things I use to keep myself looking my best at 64 years old, then I will put a video either here or here of all the procedures I've had done. And so watch that video if you're curious about what I do. But I did just return three weeks ago tomorrow from an upper blepharoplasty video and that's where they kind of get rid of some of the upper eyelid skin if you have hooded eyes it's really helpful in accomplishing that and a lot of you will say who've seen my videos in the past Beth you always had a lot of upper eyelid space you didn't need an upper bluff why are you doing this and I have to admit that before I went to do it, I did look at my upper eyelids and I thought, you know, they're not terribly hooded. I had a little bit of hooding inside here, but the main reason I wanted to do it was kind of a weird one. And I'll show you the picture that I actually sent in to Dr. Maloney. And by the way, he has free consultations and I'll put a link below. And that is a great way for you to just send in your pictures, tell Dr. Maloney what your problems are, and he'll give you a free consult to tell you what he advises would help you and also the cost of that. And I will tell you before I get into more details about the upper bluff procedure, this upper blepharoplasty procedure costs $3,000. I paid for that totally with my own money and I am not sponsored by Dr. Maloney or anything like that. I just feel like when you find a good provider, you should share that information with others. But again, you always have to do your due diligence. And how I found Dr. Maloney is that I had a Mohs surgery procedure under this eye. Yes, I, it was this eye. And basically a Mohs surgeon cut out what they thought was skin cancer. Turns out it was not skin cancer. But anyway, he made a huge scar on my face from here to here. And about a year after I had that Mohs procedure, I thought that scar looks bumpy and horrible. And so I did some research on who would be good at reconstructing that scar or helping me revise that whole area. And I kind of thought that maybe some filler in that area would help to make that scar look less. And I did a lot of research and I found Dr. Christopher Maloney and he has almost totally five-star reviews. And so basically I made my decision to consult with Dr. Maloney to revise this scar. And unfortunately he looked at that. I did a free consult with him and he looked at that and he said, Beth, filler is not going to help you. He said, you really need a complete scar revision. And I said, what's that? And he said, I basically have to cut open the scar again, sew it together, you know, with a better suture line and it should heal in a much better way. And look at that. It totally healed just beautifully. When you look at it and you know what you're looking for, you can see that little scar. It's not totally invisible, but my land, it is about a hundred times better than it was after the Mohs surgeon cut that original scar on my face. And I had the scar revision done maybe three years ago. And since that time, several of my friends and even family members have gone to see Dr. Maloney and he is in Tucson, Arizona. So it does take a flight for most people but they have gone to see him and a few of my friends have gotten a facelift with him and a couple of family members have gotten an upper bluff. One male family member got an upper and a lower bluff. And that's what I decided to do with Dr. Maloney is to get the upper bluff and let me show you why. Here is the picture that I sent to Dr. Maloney. And increasingly over the last few years, really since I hit about 60, one of my eyes has become very hooded and it is the eye that you see on your left hand side. And as you can see, 
Not only is it more hooded on that side, but the eye on the left side appears to be markedly smaller than the eye on the right side. That has been getting worse and worse over the last couple of years, and I really noticed that about three months ago, and I thought I really want to do something about that. And when I consulted with Dr. Maloney about it, when I had that free consult, I asked him if he could end up doing the upper bluff procedure and if that would actually open up this eye and make it larger and make it more the same size as the eye on the other side. And he said, Beth, eyes are often asymmetrical. And he said, doing the procedure might have an impact on that, but I really can't guarantee it. But I really feel like it did increase the size of that eye and make it more like the eye on the other side. And I'm going to show you all 14 days of my healing journey. And after I get through that two week healing journey, I'll show you again the before picture contrasted with an after picture that I took this morning. And you can see for yourself if you think my eyes have evened out in size. And I will tell you that me, my husband, and a friend of ours all went together three weeks ago tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday and I had the procedure three weeks ago on Friday. But the three of us went together. My husband got an upper and a lower bluff. My friend got an upper bluff and so did I. And I will tell you, if you are going through the upper bluff procedure, swelling is a normal part of the process, but it can be kind of scary. But enough of the chit chat. Let me go in and I'll show you my upper bluff journey every step of the way. Okay, we just got to Tucson. It's about 9.30 in the morning here. And I have my first doctor's pre-op appointment this afternoon. And we started out our morning super early. We had to leave the house to, to go to the airport at 4.30 which meant we had to get up at three. And of course, I'm an early riser. So I woke up at one o'clock in the morning and I have not slept. So I am very tired right now. And so what we're going to do, we actually brought a friend with us to do an upper bluff too. So the three of us are going to have the procedure together, which should be kind of fun. I don't know if fun is the right word, but kind of interesting. So I'm Dr. Chris Maloney. We're talking about upper eyelids, which is called upper eyelid blepharoplasty or upper bluffs yes. for short. And what we're talking about is when people come in and they have extra upper eyelid skin, sometimes it's bad enough where it's even blocking their peripheral vision. A little bit of skin from the upper eyelid to improve the contour. There really is more skin there than I really thought there was. And then there's just the tiniest bit of fat right yep. in the middle. And we remove those little fat pads just so we get a little bit of a better contour. Yeah. The scar is invisible, lies right in the eyelid crease right in here. Okay. And you know, when it's done and it's healed, it's okay. very yeah. hard to see. And it seems like one of my eyes looks smaller than the other one. And I can never remember which one it is. And I know that people are asymmetrical or whatever, but do you think that doing that procedure might have an impact on that one eye that's smaller? Almost everybody has one eye that's a different shape or a little bit more skin on one side than the other. So to have asymmetry is extremely common, right. especially with breasts and ears and anything that we have two of. Yeah. One's always going to be different than yeah. the other. But when you're done with upper eyelid blepharoplasty or upper eyelid surgery, typically the amount of asymmetry that you might have had before is lessened. Oh, nice. But it's still, you're always going to have a little bit, little bits of asymmetry. Yeah. You and I will notice because we're looking with this magnified mirror right. that no one else yeah. notices. Okay, Alan is in the shower. It is about eight o'clock in the morning. At 8.15, we're going to knock on our friend's door's room. She's in 306, in case you care. But anyway, we're going to drop by her room and we're going to go down and eat breakfast. We're allowed to eat before the procedure because we're not going to be put under or anything like that. I had to take three Keflex this morning. Each of us take three antibiotics twice a day just to make sure we don't get any infections. There are the old eyes. We're not supposed to wear any makeup or any deodorant. And I'm sorry, I drew the line at deodorant. I did wear deodorant. An hour before my noon procedure, I'm supposed to take two Valium so I'll be feeling no pain by the time we get there. Okay, I'm in Dr. Maloney's office, ready to get my procedure. I think the Valium is kicking in, which makes me feel really, really good. Here are my eyes. And we'll see how they look after. I'm really excited about this. And I'm feeling pretty good under the effects of the Valium. Okay, I am home from the plastic surgery experience. And here are my eyes up close and personal. They feel kind of tight. This is probably about two and a half hours after my procedure, because again, Alan had his after me. Each one took about 50 minutes. I had mine, then Alan had his, and then our friend had hers. And then we took the Uber home. We feel good. My eyes feel tight right now, as you can tell. 
they're very red looking and I'm getting some bruising under here, but they feel pretty normal. Not really any pain. I did take a pain pill after I got home. Okay. I just woke up this morning and uh, after having the procedure yesterday at noon, we came back and took all of our Valiums and all that stuff and hydrocodone, took that yesterday for pain. I got through the night, woke up about three o'clock in the morning, had a hard time sleeping, but I got back to sleep, thankfully, and I don't know what time it is now, maybe 7.30 or 8 the next morning. My husband is brushing his teeth back there, but here are my eyes, and they look very swollen. They don't hurt, though. Nothing hurts. And so I'm done with the Valium. I'm done with the hydrocodone. I definitely don't believe in taking any of that stuff if you don't need it. I realized in looking back at my first video, I was kind of out of it when I got out of the surgery. And I didn't tell you enough in depth about what it was really like. So I'll just go ahead and give you a little play-by-play -play of what happened yesterday. It was really very easy, very, very simple to go through. About an hour before the surgery started, they had me take two Valium, so I was kind of woozy when I went in. And Dr. Maloney and his very nice nurse, Sue, kind of brought me into the room. Actually, Sue did that, and she, you know, covered me with a blanket. She asked if I wanted a blanket, and I always loved that. And so she put a blanket on me, and then he came in. Well, first, first, I think he marked both sides to let him know exactly the skin that he wanted to take. And then he started on this side, and he did a few little simple injections. And he said, most people think this is less painful than Botox. And it really was, it wasn't painful at all. Of course, I had had the Valium and then he, you know, injected a few spots to do the local anesthetic there. And then he did the cutting and it didn't feel painful at all. You could kind of feel like maybe he was doing something there. You could feel some pressure maybe, but that was about it. And then he said within about five minutes, I'm done with that side. And then he did the same on this side. He re-injected it. The shots did not hurt, and then, you know, he felt it was numb within a minute or so. He asked, I think he asked, can you feel this pressure here, and I couldn't. And then he, he finished this side, and then he went back, and he put the stitches in this side, and the stitches in this side, and then, you know, he sat me up, and then Sue gave me instructions, and she said that I should be using, not necessarily ice, but ice water, and she gave me a bunch of gauze pads, and I would take, she showed me how to take the gauze pads, maybe about five of them, put them into a little rectangular shape, squeeze them, and then put them in the cold water. Maybe they had an ice cube in it. She gave me a, a little red Dixie cup to take with me and just go ahead and put those on my upper eyelids. She said it would really help. She said you could take a shower after the first day, no problem at all. She said getting it wet is not a problem. And uh, basically again, she said no makeup for two weeks, which was fine. So anyway, it was just a super, super easy process. Okay, I am at lunch in the first full day of healing at Chili's, we came to Chili's, and there are my eyes. And I'm out in public, it does not bother me. I have no makeup on, of course, and certainly no eye makeup on, but I'm feeling good. Everything is pretty easy, no pain at all. Everything is good. And I will tell you that during the healing process, it's always a little scary at times. And I just want to admit that to you because I don't want you to think it's like HGTV where you decide you want a brand new room and then poof, it's perfect and everything's wonderful. I did want to let you know a little bit about the, the downsides as you're going through it, the little scary points. I've got some swelling here and definitely some swelling over here. A lot of swelling there. This is Sunday at about 10 in the morning. Here are my eyes now. They're a little less swollen than they were this morning. The swelling does tend to go down through the day, which is really wonderful. I am getting more of a bruise here. Not really there. That side is not as bruised. However, this side is more swollen. I have a nice, uh, I have a nice little bag under here. It's not as bad as it was yesterday though. I will say again, the healing process is no fun because you obviously go through very ugly stages <laughs> and you're not sure how things are going to look in the end. Okay, it is Monday morning, and it is five o'clock in the morning. I've been up since three, that's me. I'm an early riser, plus uh, basically it's two hours later in Wichita, so it's hard for me to get used to sleeping so late here in Arizona. But I'll show you my eyes. I hope you don't hear my husband snoring in the bed because he is doing that. But anyway, here is a look at my eyes, and they do not hurt. There's a look at the stitches. 
They don't hurt. They are still swollen. I still have a little bit of bruising in here, a little bit of bruising there. But, and I have to say, whenever I touch them like this, you can feel that it's still sore and still a little bit swollen. But I feel good. It doesn't bother me from a physical standpoint. I have to say, from an emotional standpoint, always, whenever I have any little thing done, you know, it feels, feels a little bit scary to be in the middle of it. But I do trust Dr. Maloney implicitly, and I know it's going to turn out turn out very well. So anyway, this morning at 8, we'll go in and have our little post-op appointment. That's me, my friend, and Alan, and he'll give us any last-minute instructions. Then we will hit the plane about 11.30 this morning from Tucson. We'll arrive in Wichita about 7.30 this evening. It's going to be a long day. I think we have a long layover in Dallas. But it does not bother me to go without makeup and to even have this kind of thing going on. Nobody looks at anybody else, and half the time I have my glasses on, so they, they really don't see this. So. This is Monday morning. I'm back in Wichita, and I got in from doing this thing to myself, and uh, our master bath is being redone, and so we are in a small guest bathroom, and the house is a wreck, and so it's really not too much fun to be here either. <laughs> it's like my face is kind of going through weirdness, and so is my home. Also, my utility room is uh, being retiled. So, I mean, it is just crazy how much is going on around here. But I do have a little bit of swelling here. I don't think I was as good icing it when we were traveling yesterday. In fact, I know that I was not. And it is now Wednesday morning. And there is how my eyes look. I still have the swelling here, which I'm not real happy about. But I did end up texting Dr. Maloney and he said that it's perfectly normal. And I do get the stitches pulled, there are the stitches, in another couple of days, Friday morning. So I'm really excited about that. But anyway, that's how it looks right now. I'm in my bathroom that is being remodeled. So it's still a mess, no tub or anything. Uh, my face project goes on as, as does my eternal bathroom project. Okay, here I am on day five after the surgery. And I still have the swelling going on here. Here, I'll just look straight in there so you can see both of my eyes. This eye is doing fine. This eye has some swelling on that inner corner. However, Dr. Maloney said that is normal. He told me that yesterday, I guess. So I guess I'll just continue feeling like that is normal. However, I will tell you, ladies, uh, this kind of a recovery process is never a dull moment. Somehow, it always seems like there's a point at which you go, ah, what did I do to myself? But okay, I finally made it to seven days to the day when they are going to be taking out the stitches. This morning at 8.30, Alan and I are going to have the stitches removed. There are the stitches. And I still have a little bit of swelling here, but it is really not what it was even a few days ago. Pretty much this swelling is gone, and this is still going down. But I am so happy to see the swelling going down. And... <laughs> My whole life has been crazy this week. In addition to going through this with no makeup, no working out, you know, no skincare at all, no devices, I'm also going through a remodel of my bathroom. And so I don't know if you can see that, but it is crazy. We are really trying to get this bathroom figured out. We just got all this new tile. You can see the shower there. And if you would like to see a look, a more in-depth look at, at the before and after on my bathroom, in addition to my face, then uh, let me know because I'd be glad to show you what we what we end up with. The painters are coming Wednesday. It has been just crazy, but I am so happy. And I will let you see the results just after I remove the stitches this morning. Hey, okay, here I am with my sunblock on looking super greasy. I'm about to go in to the Plastic Surgery Aesthetic Center and have these stitches pulled. That's how it looks. And that's how it looks without me showing you exactly the stitches but I will be back in a few minutes to show you the results. Okay, I have the sutures out. I've not really looked at it yet, so I don't know what it looks like, but I presume it looks better. I am so happy to get to this point. The aesthetics person, actually she's a nurse, she said, yes, the swelling is still there, but I'm looking good. And she says the majority of swelling goes down within six weeks, but that you really don't have your final result for six months. So. I guess this is a longer process than I thought it would be, but so far so good. Okay, here I am day eight after the procedure. Here are my eyes. 
And there, as you can see, I thought that the black yesterday was all stitches and apparently it was scabs, but the scabs kind of slipped off between yesterday and today. I didn't help them along, but I think the Baca trim or Bassa trim, whatever that I used, just kind of soften them up. I'm so happy to see most of them gone. I think most all of them are gone. The swelling is really continuing to go down, which I'm very happy about. So that's where I am on day eight after the procedure. Okay, here I am the evening of day nine, and I actually have some face makeup on for the first day in more than a week. And these are my eyes. That's how they look. And Dr. Maloney was right. The swelling is continuing to go down. I still have some swelling there and there. That's where the fat pads were removed, but I am really feeling good about things at this point. It's been kind of tough being oh, like nine days with no makeup at all because, you know, I'm a girl from the 50s and from seventh grade on pretty much whenever I leave the house, I have makeup on. Okay, this is day 10. I had the procedure a week ago Friday and this is now Monday. It's actually Labor Day. So we're going over to my parents later today to have a little cookout, which should be fun. But here are my eyes today, and I think I'll get you through two weeks, which will be my final day before I can, well, when I can wear makeup, which will be great. So here are my eyes this morning. I hope you can see them. The swelling is continuing to go down. Man, I am so glad to be here. You guys, what you can't see in these videos, or I don't know if you can see, is really the difficulty of getting through something like this. Whenever you have your face cut on, or your body or anything like that. It is really worrisome as you're going through the healing because you don't just go from A to B just like that. <laughs> it takes some time and a little bit of worry. So anyway, I am really feeling good about it now though. I had the procedure a week ago Friday and it is Tuesday at about noon. And I actually do have face makeup on now and lipstick, but I still do not have eye makeup on. That's not going to happen until Saturday. But here's a look at my eyes. I'll show you the tops. They are still a little bit scabby, but I am really, really happy with how they're looking. I have lost the fat pads in the inner corners of my eyes. They're still swollen, but I think they look pretty good. And I will tell you, I, I wish they could put you to sleep on the day of the procedure and wake you up a week and a half later, because it is amazing how much better you look in just over a week. Okay, this is day 12. It is the Wednesday following my procedure, which was a week ago last Friday. So we're on day 12 and I do have face makeup on and also lipstick, but my eyes are really continuing to improve every day. It is the morning, so they're still a little bit more swollen than they probably will be later in the day, but there is how the incisions look. And I finally really looked at them close up this morning. I don't know when I feel them, when I'm putting on that um, gel or whatever that that's a trace and ointment. Sometimes I was feeling what I thought were raised scars. And so that scared me. I was afraid to look, but I looked and they're not raised scars. The, the healing is going along very nicely. I'm pleased with it. Of course, everything is still swollen. So the incision areas are a little bit raised there as they would be because it is a little bit swollen. Okay, this is day number 13. Tomorrow is Friday and I had the procedure two weeks ago Friday. So tomorrow is two weeks and I can wear makeup, yay! My husband and I are going out to dinner with another couple and I have been waiting to be able to wear makeup like for a long time, I'm so excited. Uh, sorry, my face is so shiny, I just washed it and so it's very shiny, but here are my eyes. There they are and there's still some swelling, but they feel good and the bags seem to be largely gone um, on the inside. I'm really excited about that. I look a lot better than I did, you know, three and four days ago even. The first week was rough, I have to admit. There was a lot of swelling and I really had doubts at a lot of points along the way if I'd done the right thing. But I think that when all is said and done, this is going to look really good. Again, those are my eyes, close up. And those scars should totally blend in over time. Okay, for the first time in two weeks, I have my makeup, at least my eye makeup on, and I'm really happy with how it looks. It just looks like my eyelids are not as crepey on the inside and they're still swollen, I suppose. And, and I know they are. For six weeks, you you know, six weeks till you see 90% of the result, six months until you see 100% of the result. But I am really very happy after a lot of fright. But I will have to say, 
my eyelids are numb and hopefully that will go away over time or at least decrease because that does affect the nerves a little bit. It was hard to put on eyeliner. And also my, my normal eyeliner was kaput. So I had to choose a different one this morning. So I wasn't used to applying that. So that was a little challenge, but anyway, I am so happy with how this looks. Well, that was a look at my upper bluff procedure on a day-by-day -day basis, and I will tell you it was a little bit frightening at times. It's always scared as you're going through something, you see swelling here and swelling here, and you don't know how it's going to work out, but it did work out very well. And I promised you earlier in the video that I would show you a before and after picture on trying to even out my eyes. And so here it is. In the before picture, as you can tell, the red arrow is pointing to the eye on your left-hand side, and as you can tell, the size of it is smaller than the eye on the right, and that's because the hooding is so much more prominent on that side before the blepharoplasty. And then in the after picture, as you can tell, the hooding is gone, and the eye on the left side is almost identical in size to the eye on the right. And even though Dr. Maloney reminded me that eyes can be asymmetrical, and he didn't promise me that he could even at their size, what he did really worked and I am so happy about the results. And if you're interested in making a measurable difference to the shape of your face without any surgery, then hang around on my channel and watch this video on my six week results using the Oralift.